So in one of my earlier videos, I unboxed a load of upgrades I recently bought for the Evo, including these single-piece vented rear discs. As probably most of you know because you're watching this video, single-piece cast discs tend to rust and become a bit unsightly over time, and my set of discs on the Evo at the moment are looking quite tired. So I've decided before fitting these new ones to give the unstrapped area on the outside of the discs that mounts to the hub a coat of paint to protect it from the elements, prevent it from rusting, and generally make it look a bit better. I'm going to show you how I do it, and how I've done it before, and what works for me. So this isn't necessarily the definitive guide, but it's worked for me in the past and given a durable, protective and better looking finish than if I'd fitted them unpainted. I'm also going to be doing this slightly differently as well. I'm going to be painting using a brush rather than a spray can. It's probably a slightly different method than most people use. It's worked for me before. I've had no issues with it either. It just means an extra step in terms of sanding everything down a bit more than you would do if you were using a spray can. So let's get going. If you're painting brand new discs, chances are they will have come packaged and covered in a thin layer of oil or grease solution. This is applied to help prevent the discs from rusting from any moisture in the atmosphere while in storage or in transit. In order to ensure that the paint that I'm going to apply sticks to the surface of the discs, all of this oil needs to be thoroughly cleaned up. If you're doing this to a set of used discs, the same rule applies. Make sure it's thoroughly cleaned with brake cleaner or some other solvent solution to give a good finish. You may also want to lightly sand or scotch the surface that you're going to be painting, but the most important thing to do is degrease them thoroughly before you begin applying any paint. And although these are new discs and not been exposed to brake pads or dust, I'm still using brake cleaner as it does a good job of degreasing the surface, is safe for the iron without discolouring it or by reacting with the metal. The inside face also needs to be degreased, not that I'm planning on painting here, but the rear brake shoes from the handbrake on the Evo 10 and most cars will bind to the inside of the face here. As I'm doing one face now, I might as well clean the whole disc. Once you're happy that everything's thoroughly clean, it's time to mask. You mask each disc overlapping your masking tape and making sure that it falls inside the edge that you're going to paint. You don't need to be overly careful here as you're going to trim off the excess tape in a moment. Your disc should have quite a sharp circular edge or valley between the swept area where the pad contacts that you don't want to paint and the inner hub mount. Once both discs are masked, you need to trim off the excess tape along the edge that you want to paint up to. On discs where there is a distinct ridge between the swept area and the hub mount, like here, it's relatively simple. The trick is to hold your trimming knife at an angle and slice across the edge. You're not strictly cutting out a circle with a knife, you're using the ridge of the disc to dictate where the tape gets cut as the knife slices or scores across it. It's a bit fiddly and will eventually blunt your blade, but should give you a nicely and evenly masked out circle when done. I'm using Hammerite as it's a very hard wearing paint that can be applied directly to metal without any primer. It can also be applied to rusty metal, so consider this as a viable option if you're doing this to use discs that have slightly rusted. The paint has also got quite good heat resistant properties and it's generally quite a tough paint which I've used before and had no issues with. I'm also going to try to colour match as best I can the colour of the bells of the gyro discs on the front of the car. They have a slight blue tinge to them. So I've got some blue metallic paint sitting on the shelf that I'm going to mix in with the hammerite to see whether I can give a bit of a blue finish to the silver. This first attempt wasn't too bad, it did come out a bit too light and a bit too blue, so I made sure for my second coat I mixed up a darker batch. There's no special trick to painting with a brush, choose a relatively small one if possible. Just make sure to paint on evenly and not too thick. Take your time and work out any brush marks as you paint. The smoother you can make the paint look at this stage, the less work you'll have to do when it comes to sanding down once the paint is dry. Make sure you have a good even coverage and include painting up and over the masking tape. Then leave to dry for at least 24 hours. Once it's dry you need to give it a sand before the next coat. The more time and care you can take during this stage the better your final finish will be. Use some fine sandpaper, I went for a thousand grit, and work your way around the whole painted area. Include the sides, the face, and in a recess close to the masked up area. Also make sure to sand inside the stud holes in case you've got any runs of paint that got in there. This part can be a little time consuming to do thoroughly, especially if you're using quite fine sandpaper. Take care when sanding close to any sharp edges and corners. It's very easy to sand off the paint on an edge, which will be thinner anyway than a flat surface. Again, take your time, keep working over the painted area until you're happy that you've flattened the paint back enough and removed as many of the brush strokes as possible. Thoroughly clean off any of the dust from the surface once you're done. I gave it a quick hoover and then I used isopropyl alcohol to clean the surface with a paper towel and pick up the last few bits of dust. Now repeat the process with a second coat of paint. As you can see, the second batch of hammerite paint I mixed up had far less blue in and was much darker. So once again, paint carefully and evenly, working out as many brush strokes as possible. Leave to dry for 24 hours. Sand down again as thoroughly and evenly as you can to give it a smooth surface and clean the rest off with solvent solution. If you have the time, you could consider doing a third coat. At this stage, the discs are ready to fit. However, due to the fine sanding, the finish was quite dull and matte compared to the shiny gyro disc bells. Rather than putting on a coat of gloss high temp lacquer, which Hamrite doesn't need, I decided to polish the surface with some moderately aggressive cutting compound. 
The paint renovator is quite aggressive stuff and will remove most of the fine scratches from the thousand grit paper in the paint. After a few passes of paint renovator, I finished off with super resin polish, which is a much finer polish that gives the surface a much shinier finish. At the end of this process, you should be left with something that looks like this. Not a bad result, and the colour isn't an exact match, but fine for my purposes for the little cost and effort this is to do, especially as most of the face of this painted area won't even be seen. As I said, this is how I do it and how it works for me. It's easy to do and looks a lot better than a rusty rotor. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Thank you.